can't make a fool of me. These humans are nothing but pig swine. Uh huh. Go out and collect all the treasure you can get your hands on. <laughs>
All right. Oh, the retreat's here at the theater. Not like... I thought we were, like, going to, like, the Jersey Shore or something. But no, no, we're just doing a spin at the theater. But then that makes sense, because if we have to... If we have to scramble, we're in a position to, to uh... Shoot up. Uh, I mean, she's the youngest member of the group. I suspect English is not her first language. And I also suspect that her reading level for both English and Spanish is not currently great to begin with. Um, due to age more than anything, due to age and traveling and lack of access to schooling than everything else. I mean... I don't mean that as like a, a, a crack on Mexico or anything like that. Like the literacy level in the United States in the 1920s still significantly lower than the literacy level now. Uh, like I, I I forget like we have a like we had a, like other school system certainly existed then, but fun to put this. Um, Double check this on the internet. Like the literacy level, like when you got into rural areas, I want to say, of the United States in the 20s and 30s, dropped. And yes, this is, we are in a theoretical steampunk future, but still. Or steampunk alternate past, I guess I'm putting it. I'll keep going with this. Yeah, she hasn't had a lot of um, ordinary social experiences that would normally get happen for a kid her age. There's even Niccolo. There we go. My end. Here we go. Uh, percentage. So like, what it is like my 1979 total literacy rates were 0.4 percent. That's less than one percent. Or like 1920 and 30. Uh, and that's actually, sorry, I'm in the wrong column. 0.6% for 1979, going from the uh, census data. Um, by like 1920 and 30, it was like 6% of going down to 4.3%. And the rate of illiteracy spiked dramatically, like by leaps and bounds, if you were an immigrant or a person of color. And Rosita is a person of color. And by spike dramatically, I mean 
um, in 1920, and that the total average illiteracy rate was six percent. It was two percent for native for U.S. born white people. Thirteen point one percent for immigrants who are still white. And then for people if you're a person of color, it went up again to twenty three point twenty three percent, almost a quarter of the population, primarily due to the fact that schools for people of color, due to lack of funding, segregation, inferior supplies and equipment and that sort of thing, were just so poor. So, yeah. That said, pardon me. I don't like. So, while this is kind of an accuracy with Rosita's lack of education and literacy, I don't like. It's not executed well because it's played for laughs. All right. All right. So, sleepover, not right away. It's within a week. I suspect we're going to have a deployment before then. And rehearsal. Okay. The problem is Rosita's, like... We've just established that Rosita's literacy is not great. Like... We'll see how this goes. This is gonna be cringy. Yeah, basically is what she's gonna have to do. Is I have the dialogue read to her. So I'm going to read. So I'm, so I'm going to read her the lines, but also give direction. Like the, the, the look on Karen's face is kind of like, oh, okay. I'm not. He's not actually that good an actor. This is a sleepover. Okay. All right. Okay. I got the person that Karen actually kind of has a way with kids. Option one is probably going to get me, of whatever this, I presume is going to be going into the bathhouse would probably get me in trouble.
Okay. Does well, probably more related to her, her gender identity. Or their gender, I'm sorry. Their gender identity. Again, for those who are just tuning in, um, I... Subaru is uh, gender fluid. Um, I'm a dude! Uh. All right. Okay. <sighs> okay. I assume it's an actual hot dog in this case, as opposed to localized as pan. Speaking of which, there is a... <clears throat> I didn't have a chance to go there um, yesterday, but apparently we just had a, in the Portland area had a uh, place that makes Japanese-style filled breads, pan, um, open up in Bridgeport, the yeah, Bridgeport Shopping Center. Aspirated Subaru. No, it's not really discrimination. I'm getting the impression that the cat that took a whole bunch, so I have tons to look at. I'm guessing that the camera for our camera thing then is actually a Polaroid style thing. Which is also interesting because that means that like we have jumped the timeline in terms of like not just camera phones, but also um, the Polaroid. That's a reasonable description. Super. She runs away whenever I try to get a picture, but I got her today. And Ratchet, she braided my hair, but it's kind of weird. She is really clumsy. Yeah, it is fun. And there are lots of Cherry and Henri and Gemini too. But I took the most of you. I also noticing that like a lot of the art 
bits here are actually like background shots or the still shots and that sort of thing. So it's a good reuse of assets. Um, I think that's the right one. Yep, that's the right one. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to just cut, just cut off the line. And there's a timer. Okay. Hurry up, scenes. Come stand next to me. All right. It is perfect. Okay. Okay. Me and Shins together. I'm so happy I could crappy. Okay. <sighs> yes, that is not right. <laughs> And next day. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.